Okay, everybody, welcome back. This is actually something I've been really looking forward to because this is a major integral part of what I'm going to try and do. So, as you can see, we have a dry sump oil pump. Now, these things, if you're going to do any sort of hard endurance racing, things like that, a dry sump is an incredible thing to have. It has so many benefits, and frankly, compared to a wet sump, there's maybe the only thing that a wet sump can do better than dry sump is convenience that's it so I purchased this pump off of Facebook marketplace I got a really good deal on it because it was it was seized up it had some metal shavings inside and it made it so it couldn't turn so the guy didn't want to tear it apart so he just figured okay I'll sell it give it to someone else they can tear it apart and look inside and figure out what's going on so what I did is I took this apart I already took it apart and I cleaned it and I put it back together and as you can see it now spins completely free no binding whatsoever so because of this I figured apparently not many people know how to take these things apart and maybe you can get a good deal but fundamentally they're pretty simple and they're very very similar to a lot of other pumps there isn't a lot of differences between the two so this is a Weaver Brothers pump. It's very, very similar to a stock car products pump in the fact that it just has spur gears inside. There's some pumps like a daily engineering pump that has tri-lobal gears, but we'll get to that when we get there. So first thing we need to do is we need to get this pulley off the front because everything kind of stacks up. So in order to get it all apart, we have to take the pulley, get it off, and then we can start disassembling the rest of the body from there. So. First thing you gotta do is take off this end bolt that essentially makes sure that even if these set screws come loose that are within the pump or within the pulley itself, that it can't come off this direction. So now that that's off, you have to loosen these set screws. Now there's four of them, so let me get these out and I'll fast forward you so that you don't have to see me do the same thing over and over again. With those loose, I'm using a rubberized mallet just so I don't mar things up. Should be able to pop that loose and off it comes. So as you can see you have your set screw there, there, and the matching on the other side. And there's this little pass throughs built into the gear themselves so you can actually get an allen wrench to it because you can't really get to it there and especially not the back side that butts up to this face. So now you are left with how most of them come if you buy them from someone, minus fittings and whatnot. But all fundamentals of the pumps from here on out are the same. And the fact that there's typically four pins or studs, whatever you want to call them, that run through the pump themselves. So all we have to really do is first we have to actually get that keyway out. But we have to take these set screws out, well not set screws, but take the nuts off these ends and push the pins out the back side and then we can start disassembling them stage by stage by stage until we have nothing left and everything's into pieces and then you can clean it or see what's going on inside. So I will take these out and you'll check back in once they're all a piece or all apart. Okay, so now these four are still in, but as you can see, there we're just left with the bolt heads themselves. So now what I do is I put my Allen in the side that still has a nut or a drive system on it because I'm pretty sure some of these just have long bolts that run through them. And I'm gonna spin this as I push on it from the opposite end. And it should start to walk itself out to the point where I can grab it and pull it out.
Right, so now we have our four pins out, four nuts that came off of them. So now, if you look, I wonder if we can actually see, but you can see right down through there. And if you look real close, you can see the stages are now moving independently from each other. If I even start to wiggle them apart a little bit, they start to come apart. Now, if you're doing this for the first time, they're not going to come apart that easily. Like I said, I've already disassembled this, took it all apart so I could actually figure out what was going on. So mine has all been already been apart, so there's no sealant. Now some pumps have O-rings. I can show you where they put the O-rings. They'll put the O-rings right along this face so that essentially they don't need sealant you just need to bolt them together the o-ring seal on the plates themselves and then you don't have any oil leaks mine's not like that mine must use an anaerobic type sealant that you just put on here when you're putting it all together tighten it down dries up seals that way so this is your front face cover of your dry sump pump and inside you can see there's a little bit of wear it's not perfect by any means, but there's nothing fundamentally wrong with this that will make it not usable. It's still gonna pump oil, and it's not gonna bind up. So we'll put that off to the side. So this is your actual drive gears. These are just a standard spur gear setup. Now, like I said, daily pumps have kind of a tri-lobal design, but these are fun, pretty much your standard spur gear for an oil drive set on have even seen coolant pumps that run off of spur gears but this is your driven shaft it's the one that's the longest it also has the keyway built into it for your pulley that runs on the front of it so these gears are all connected to the shaft so when i spin the one it spins the shaft itself whereas the other one is your idler shaft now these gears don't have any sort of retention on them. They just kind of sit on this. They they get driven by the other set of gears and they just spin with it. There's no nothing on here, it just slides right off. Now, your driven gear on the other hand, as you can see, has a keyway built into it right there. Now that interfaces with that woodruff key right there. So that is what actually transmits the torque from your pulley down to your gear and then makes your other gear spin, makes it create vacuum and actually creates a pumping motion. So now with that off, you actually need to get this Woodruff key out. Light pressure usually makes them pop out. There's nothing actually retaining it in there besides the fact that it can't go anywhere when it's sandwiched in between this keyway and that keyway. So we'll put that off to the side. Now. You just take off this little divider plate. Now there is O-rings that are in these divider plates to make sure that no oil can pass through because you need the, the different stages to seal independently. If you look really, really closely down in there, you might be able to make out the O-rings, but they're very, very small. They're very, very hard to see. And essentially, the more stages you have, the more sets of gears you're gonna have. This is a three-stage pump two stages of scavenge and one stage of pressure. So the first one that we pulled off, this was a scavenge section. This is also a scavenge section. And now since we have the pins out, there's no plate on it, just pop it off. On to the next one. Idler gear, nothing retaining it. Driven gear, keyway, find your woodruff key. It's right there, pop it out. On to the next one. Next plate, pop it off. Last little bit of O-rings catching on. See if you can make out it in this one, right in there. Now this is your very last stage. Now this can pop right off just like the other one. Idler gear off on its own. Now your idler shaft usually is just kind of sitting down in there. Because this shaft doesn't have to necessarily spin, since these can spin independently of it and there's oil literally everywhere, there's no bearing on these. It just 
sits in this little surface there's actually oil filled ports in there so if it does need to spin it can without seizing up and causing lots of issues but also in the front side of the pump you can also see that there's no bearing down in there either it's just machined relatively tight so that it all can spin freely your other your final driven gear and your last woodruff key. Now if you truly want to take it down to completely nothing, this is where things get a little bit interesting because this is your driven shaft. It has to spin no matter what. So there's actually a captive bearing back in here. You can't pull it through this way. You have to take this little back cap off. Now with that off, there's nothing retaining this from popping out. Although the bearing is a press fit, so you might actually have to whack on it with a hammer a few times to get the back cap to pop out. A few taps of a hammer, here's your back cap. Now there is an o-ring seal in this pump. Some pumps probably won't have that. Some pumps probably just seal with silicone. But there's your back cap. Now, if you look at this side, there's your bearing. That is what the shaft actually rides on. Even though it looks like it's riding on this aluminum plate, it's not. It's actually riding in that bearing so that there's the least amount of friction as possible because everything takes horsepower to turn in a car. Pop that all the way through. Now it can slide out the back side. And there you go. Now this is your very special plate because this is what actually modulates the pressure of the pressure stage. This is your adjustment. You loosen this nut, twist it righty tighty lefty loosey to either raise or lower the pressure it's actually outputting to the engine because there's actually from there, if, it gets, if the pressure gets too high, it'll actually bleed the oil back down to the bottom side. So if the pressure is already outputting too high, it, the oil will just recirculate top to bottom, top to bottom until you either are not over oil pressure or you just need to pump oil again. So once the, once the pressure is no longer there, pushes oil again. Now this is pretty much a standard set up for any dry sump pump that actually has a pressure side because there are scavenge only dry sump pumps but this kind of adjustment with just a lock nut and a screw is your standard way of adjusting pressure in a dry sump pump so now with all your pieces apart go through clean everything make sure there's no debris the last thing you want is metal chips or anything solid in your dry sump pump but with that take it all apart Clean it, put it all back together like I did, and you'll take a useless pump that's seized up into something that's actually usable and will pump oil again, can be put back to use in your car, and hopefully, yep, yeah, hopefully you get a good deal on one, really, because these things are very expensive if you buy them new. So hopefully you learned something from this. Hopefully you're no longer scared of dry sumps. I'm going to be doing more videos on dry sump systems and especially how to adapt them to literally any car out there because a lot of people will shy away from dry sumps if they aren't made specifically for their engine type but i had figured out a way to actually put it onto any engine so stick around for that that's going to come in the, the months to come but hopefully you learned something if you did feel free to subscribe like comment any questions you have i'll answer anything not really here to keep secrets so well keep going find new stuff learn something new